tersebut. Ada sedikit kendala tadi di awal, ada delay karena mungkin perbedaan waktu dan saya juga diajak uh, apa ya tamasya tamasya virtual ke Bayter Center tadi keren uh, ada sekitar 5 sampai sepuluh menit lah di awal yang apa namanya tidak tidak patah patah sampai kita beberapa kali coba perbaiki jaringannya perbaiki koneksinya tapi pada dasarnya ada satu pertanyaan yang terlewat tadi Uh, untuk di record pertanyaannya itu tentang saya bertanya tentang knock Beter mengeluarkan knock banyak sekali ada untuk pin knock ada untuk uh, apa namanya insert knock dan lain-lain tapi yang signifikan ada dua perbedaan yaitu asimetrikal dia bentuknya tidak tidak simetris sama yang hunter knock disebutnya Nah yang asimetrikal knock ini, ini diperuntukkan khusus untuk diciptakan malah khusus untuk pemanah rigger. Kenapa? Karena knock asimetrikal ini uh, idealnya digunakan untuk pemanah yang memegangnya seperti ini atau di bawah untuk pemanah berbo. Karena posisi string itu tidak 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 dalam posisi yang sempurna untuk sudutnya. Sedangkan untuk yang hunter knock itu memang didesain untuk pemakai di loop. Jadi untuk kompon. Gitu. Nah, saya juga bertanya eh, apa saja sih kelebihannya gitu kan kelebihan knock biter harganya kan kita tahu lumayan mahal. Jadi Knockbiter ini memang sudah didesain sedemikian rupa untuk meningkatkan akurasi. Dan kalau kita perhatikan, ini kelihatan nggak ya? Kalau kita perhatikan, groove-nya ini di sini tuh, dia tidak menjepit string. Jadi ketika ada string di sini, string bisa, bisa bergerak bebas. Kalau ada, tidak ada knocking point pun, ini bisa maju mundur di string ini. Itu salah satu kelebihannya. Dan yang kerennya lagi, biar kalau misalnya kita nabrak Robin Hood lah gitu kan istilahnya, better punya, kalau orang Indonesia bilang depot. Nah, knock depot katanya. Jadi buat buat tempat nyimpen, bisa digantung, ditaruh di quiver. Jadi kita nggak takut ketinggalan. Itu tentang knock. Nah, Pertanyaan selanjutnya itu tentang pelanjar. Untuk yang selanjutnya sih, insya Allah sudah mulai aman koneksinya. Kita saksikan. But it's not because you have to have it higher. It's because you shoot the bear shaft and you see that the bear shaft is going high. So you need to go higher with the knocking point to have the bear shaft. at the same height than the uh, fletched or a little bit lower than the fletched shaft to have the correct knocking size. So the upper knocking point can be 17 to 19 millimeter over zero. It's oh. absolutely normal. Could, can be, can be. Okay. So it's so. definitely higher with an isometric knock than with the no, knock of other manufacturers. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. So another question. I love this product, plunger, yes. button. Yes. So we can see. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell me about tips and trick to set this plunger. First of all, we have on our YouTube channel a very nice uh, video. Mm -hmm. explaining tips and tricks about the biter plunger and how it is why it's designed as it is designed and what do you need to know to use it better mm -hmm. but it's easy that we can work on it now and i tell you just some of the tips so the easiest is just to go on youtube on the biter channel and watch mm -hmm. the video but mainly uh, mainly the the information is uh, that we have different lengths but most 
of the bows have a standard length. And if you don't have a screw on um, uh, arrow rest, mm -hmm. you just need the standard plunger 65230, so maximum 23 screw in length, oh. which has a black tip and a large nut. Oh. I have here. Uh, I have to see. Wait. Okay. How to change the camera. So here we have. <coughs> you see the 230? Yep. Has a large nut mm -hmm. and a black tip. Yep. The difference to the next plunger, the, let's say the 27 zero mm -hmm. is the thin nut. So you have four millimeter more because this nut is four millimeter shorter than this one. Oh. But you don't need this usually if you don't have a screw on uh, arrow rest. Oh. And this is, oh, both of these are used with a short mm -hmm. thread here, okay? Mm -hmm. We also have a long thread yeah. Which is, this one is 53 millimeter long. This is 61 millimeter long. And the 61 millimeter long thread has a green pin, as you see, mm -hmm. not black or white, but green. Mm -hmm. And again, you have a thick nut and a thin nut mm -hmm. who have two different lengths. So basically you can say the, the biter uh, plunger has two barrels in two different sizes. 53 millimeter and a half and 61 millimeter and a half. Oh. With the short, with the short barrel, you can use white and black pins. Mm -hmm. The difference is the material is the same. The difference is two millimeters. White mm -hmm. is shorter, black is longer, two millimeters. Two mil only two then, millimeters. Yeah. yeah, but the, the material is the same, the shape is the same. The light green and dark green pin are made for the longer barrel. Oh. To make the short or the long barrel adaptable, we have two nuts. Normal, uh, the one that you have on the red one, is the large nut, yep. 11 millimeters. But we also have a version with 7 millimeters if the uh, plunger cannot be screwed in enough. So you oh. can have just change the nut and the plunger becomes 4 millimeter longer. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then second, never tie yes. the spring ball. Never tie the spring ball. You kill the spring ball. Yeah. The spring ball must always click. If yeah. you want not to click, you gently, gently just turn a quarter turn of the <laughs> screw mm -hmm. to fix it. But everything you do more, you ruin the spring ball. That's a very important information. That's why we don't give any more the screwdriver in the boxes because people was ruining spring balls. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I still have questions about the plunger. Yes. We have uh, mostly two different material for arrow. Aluminium yes. and carbon. Yes. So, which one the best tip? It's uh, the same. It's the same oh, tip. Same. We have yes, the same tip. It's the color is just changing because of the length. Oh. Okay. Our our material is unique in the world. It's a development of Mr. Biter. Mm -hmm. And it's working with both aluminum and carbon. Logically, logically, you have to clean the plunger and change the tip sometimes. But we give six, three per yeah. color, in total six tips in each plunger. So you have for a lifetime, and then you can still rebuy individual pins or yeah. tips if ever they have been used. But usually, if they get worn too much, Mm -hmm. It's a reason that tuning is not okay, that the arrow is too stiff, that the arrow is touching too much the plunger, that it's coming back. So usually, I know people shooting since six or seven years the same tip. Oh, oh okay. 
So, uh, still, still question about plunger. In Indonesia, very most young archer use very low bondage, maybe mm -hmm. 16 pound, 18 pound. Yes. When they have usually using better plunger after they can shoot in 20 pound minimum or uh, the the plunger the beta plunger has three different springs yeah. if you put the light spring or this uh, soft, soft spring which is a 0 45 millimeter uh, wire diameter mm -hmm. uh, if you use this in a position more than 5.0 because you know on the plunger we have a scale from yeah. 0 to 10 and each each click you make is 0 0.1 millimeter on this scale so you can adjust the springs tension by 100 clicks 100 times yeah. okay in the weakest spring and and due to the fact you have three springs you have 300 different settings of the plunger just on the scale yeah. so if you use uh, uh, a scale setting between 5 and 10 on the soft spring, even with 16 or 18 pounds, you can use a biter plunger. It's absolutely no problem. Okay. Just one thing is important. The plunger will never change the spine of the arrow. That means if you have the wrong spine, you will not be able to tune the arrow. That's yeah. even, even with the biter plunger, it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, please, I need your advice about Better pin side because <laughs> my my son didn't have yet. Can you can you explain? Pin, yeah, pin okay. side for recurve. Yes. Let's see. I am in our showroom. So. Oh. So here we have many, many different options. Mm -hmm. We have just sites with different apertures, so with different frames. They are very popular now, you see, different mm -hmm. holes, very popular. Mm -hmm. But we have also crosses. This is again the frame, big dots, small yeah. dots. Like a, in a gun, this is similar to a gun. We have mm -hmm. squares. So we have many, many, many different uh, options. I mean, due to the fact that you can easily exchange it, mm -hmm. easily exchange it, it is probably the most, uh, oops, I lost you. Oh, here. Ah, I can show you a little bit the showroom while I'm talking. So okay. this is the, the showroom here at the Baita Center. <laughs> so the side tunnel is probably, or actually for sure, the most um, versatile side tunnel on the world. Yep. So here we have all these points are dealers and distributors in the world. Yep. These are the dealers in Germany and this in Europe. Mm. And all these yellow points mm -hmm. are arches from these nations have been at the Baita Center for shooting. Oh. All the yellow points are arches that have been at the Baita Center. Oh. Yeah. Here we have uh, some more products mm -hmm. to show. I mean, that's what I was selling. We have uh, V boxes with a lot of accessories, we have the lock system. Mm -hmm. We have the serving tool. Mm -hmm. We have uh, limb line gauges. Yep. We have uh, string tools and serving shifters, as well as this is the workstation. And here we have a scope, weather shields, rings, 
clickers, many different clickers, side tunnels, arm guards, uh, hex wrenches. So we have, as you see, many, many different uh, products. Now I'm walking at the in the center. This is uh, when you enter the little exhibition wow. of products. And now we go into the Bite Center. So I hope that uh, all your, you have never been here. Yes. But it will be like you have been here. Here the flag of Bhutan. We had also archers from Bhutan here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And oh. this is this is our shooting range. Wow. 70 meter, four targets, up wow. to 70 meters. We have TV screens. These are flags of all the archers. Actually, we need the Indonesian flag. Okay, I will go okay. there. <laughs> we need Indonesia to be here. Okay. So, and here is the working area where you can test all the products. Where mm -hmm. we have, uh, you know, this is the new, yeah, the new Locks. lock system. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a high uh, a YouTube channel for this. And this is our high speed camera, which makes up to 25,000 wow. frames per second. Wow. So this is the area where we do the high speed. Wow. And yes, we have also stands if somebody doesn't want to shoot. Mm -hmm. We have all the stabilizers available for testing. Wow. So you see, I've, it's a pretty nice center here. Oh my God, that's very cool. It, who knows, maybe you and your son will be able to come one time. When all this crazy Corona thing is over. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay, Andreas, I have one more question about yes. uh, for tuning. Yes. I have better limb gauge. So what do you think, need your advice? What the most important thing all archers should have for tuning? I mean, uh, basically they should have the best material. So yeah. the best possible material for them. That means the best uh, limbs and the best riser. Mm -hmm. Because the fact is, if the riser and the limbs are not working in line, you have a big issue, a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. To allow to have this in line, mm -hmm. all the bow manufacturers have adjustable limb pockets normally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you need, many people say, oh, you need um, a laser alignment or whatever. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, a laser alignment is useless because you have to fix it somewhere and then this position must be straight, must yeah. be in line. But how can you know this? In our eyes, it's easier to make this with limb line gauges, maybe put two sets yeah. or four on top and bottom two. Then we have the limb tip line gauges to put under the string and then you see the alignment of alignment of the limbs. Yeah. Then we have one thing, it's called the brace, which allows you to draw the bow and see the alignment of the limbs at full draw. Oh. Yes, it's this piece That's here. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that tool. This one. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. with this, with this, you can draw the bow. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have also the, the bow holder yeah. where you can fix the bow and you have two free hands. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you can draw the bow and see if when you draw the bow, the limbs are twisting or in this way or 
uh, that means yeah. in this way or in this way. If you can manage to align the limbs, then you have for sure not many problems. Okay. And we give we give the tools to do this. And this is the limb line gauges and the limb tip line gauges, yeah. the bow brace and the bow holder. Okay. Okay, Andreas, I think it's really I'm really happy I can discuss with you. So yeah. maybe you have something to tell to well I oh. I just I just am thankful Aditya do you had this idea and I offer if you ever have questions you can collect some more questions from mm -hmm. you or from your archers or from okay. your community and in future you just tell me in time and uh, we will try again to do a little podcast about Vita products uh, okay. for Indonesian archers or for Asian archers okay. that are following you. Okay. Uh, more than happy to do it. So uh, thank you again for, for bringing it up. Yep. And just collect some questions and we can get in touch in future anytime. Okay. Andreas, thank you very much. Keep healthy. Thank you. Keep healthy and a good good time and good night to you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.